hey guys, the Lord has really put it on my heart to speak out against the wormwood waters that I'm sure most of you have noticed. Um, this is something that I was studying two nights ago, and I had confirmation last night. Thank you, Penny, for confirming that. Um, we're seeing a lot of pink. Um, you're going to notice I had uploaded the video of the eggs, and they were a pinky, fleshy color. Um, this is the mingled waters. These are the the pure, clean, crystal clear water that's being contaminated with the wormwood water. And, and we don't want to do that, guys. When you go to the Word of God and you read the Word, it cleanses you. It, it gives you that pure, clean water. Out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. This wormwood is a stagnant pond. It's a cistern that has not been flowing. And somehow, somewhere, we've gotten contaminated with man's doctrines and we've strayed away from the word. The word is truth. The word was Jesus and he became flesh. And we need to get into the word and get our roots grounded deep because it's just going to get worse. You're going to start hearing more and more of people pointing their fingers at other people. Um, they're going to be looking at the things that they can't justify. Um, they're going to be trying to chastise people. They're going to be trying to do the Lord's job. And this isn't of the Lord. You'll know that they will do it with a spirit that is not from the Holy Ghost. You need to be aware of these people. If somebody is going out and they're trying to find others to talk about and to rebuke, they're doing the Lord's job. It's too late for that, guys. And and they're spending their time in the natural. They're not in the spirit. The more that they look at the natural, they'll be talking about people's objects, uh, furnitures, uh, you know, just why women aren't wearing makeup, why they're wearing, you know, that's just nonsense that's frivolous and it doesn't do anything but tear down. It doesn't build up or edify the body or the bride. Um, so I just want to get that out there. We need to make a, a diff, a, de a desperate, different, a line between that red water and that clear water, that white water. We don't, we don't want pink. We don't want the, you know, the pink waters because then we've got contamination. And so we need to get in the word. And you're going to notice that the more that you speak the truth and the more that you speak the word, people are going to speak out against you because I'm telling you, they didn't know Jesus back then. They won't know you. They didn't like him. They hated him except his disciples and his followers. And they're going to hate you too. So the majority is going to speak out against truth, but the bride and the 144 are going to come together, and that's what we need to do. We need to go ahead and start edifying. So you need to make your line. You need to draw your line. If it's not from the Lord, you don't need to be listening to it. It's going to contaminate your water. Um, starting in Revelation verse 8, it says, The first angel sounded, and there followed health and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and the third part of the trees was burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, as it were a great mountain burning with fire, was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, this is the number three again, this is the third egg that I've been seeing in my dream. Um, it says, and the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood and third part of the waters became Wormwood and many men died because of the waters died of the waters because they were made bitter. Excuse me. So see here we've seen that this star falls from heaven just like the star of Satan, the angel that was part of God's kingdom. He fell and he took a third part of the stars with him. Well, here we see another star falling. So that's a big, big, uh, 
Newsflash right there. We need to pay attention to what's going on in the spiritual realm. We need to get out of the flesh. They're trying to keep you in the flesh by saying that they're in the spirit. And then they're speaking out against everybody in their flesh. Okay? This is not the Lord's work. And I'm telling you this because I love you and I care about what you listen to. And I want you to listen to truth. Because that's the only thing that's going to get you through these last days. Hebrews 12. He led me to 14 and 15. It says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. This is that spirit of bitterness, that spirit of jealousy, that spirit of untruth. And it is not a spirit of the Lord. It is a spirit of Satan. Please beware. When I speak this, I speak in love. And I don't, I don't speak this to scare you because I want you to keep your peace. But the only way you're going to keep your peace is if you get away from listening to these people. It's not good, guys. Um, also, I want to take you to Acts 8. And this is why it's so important that you stay away from the bitterness. Because you're going to want this. You're going to want what I'm fixing to read you. Acts 8, verse 13. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Okay, so here we have Simon, who was baptized, and he continued with Philip, but he wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So right here, we don't see that Simon has done these gifts, okay, or these signs and miracles. Verse 14, now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Okay, Peter and John were one of the three disciples that went on to the Mount of Transfiguration. You would have said that they were probably Jesus' favorite and probably the most faithful, um, humble men. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. So John and Peter go to Samaria because Samaria had received the word of God and they, they come down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. In verse 16, it says, For as yet he, the Holy Ghost, was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they hands on them that they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also of this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with, ye, with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then Peter answered, then Simon, then answered Simon, sorry, and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Okay, and then we're going to turn to Proverbs 5, and I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to earth, her steps take hold of hell, lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Hear me now therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. 
and thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And say, How I have hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof, and have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Drink waters out of thine own cistern, and running waters out of thine own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad, and rivers of waters in the streets. Let them be only thine own, and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed, and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times, and be thou ravished always with her love. And wilt And why wilt thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman and embrace the bosom of a stranger? For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord, and he pondereth all his goings. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cords of sins. He shall die without instruction, and the greatness of his folly he shall go astray. And Lord... Uh, You guys, the Lord has really shown me in Deuteronomy 29 that he wants me to read this and share this with you guys as well. It's, It's just a warning to be obedient. In verse 1 it says, These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. And Moses called unto all Israel and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt unto Pharaoh and unto all his servants and unto his all his land. The great temptations which thine eyes have seen, the signs and those great miracles. Yet the Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. And I have led you forty years in the wilderness. Your clothes are not waxen old upon you. And thy shoe is not waxen old upon thy foot. Ye have not eaten bread, neither have ye drunk wine or strong drink, that ye might know that I am the Lord your God. And when ye came unto this place, Sihon the king of Heshbon and Og the king of Bashan came out against us unto battle, and we smote them. We took their land and gave it for the inheritance unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites and to half the tribe of Manasseh. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them, that ye may prosper in all that you do. You stand this day, all of you, before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders and your officers with all the men of Israel, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water, that thou mayest enter into covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with thee this day, that he may establish thee to day for the people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he has said unto thee, and as he has sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God, and also with him that is not here with us this day. For we know how we have dealt in the land of Egypt, and how we came through the nations which we passed by. And ye have seen their abominations, and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. Lest there should be any among you man, or woman, or family, or tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve other gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it came to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace. Though I walk in the imagination of my heart, and add drunkenness to thirst, the Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven, and the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel according to the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the law. 
so that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, When they see the plagues of the land and the sickness which the Lord hath laid upon it, and that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that it is not sown, nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma, Zobim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath, even all nations shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto the land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? The men shall say, Because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods whom they knew not, whom he had not given unto them. The anger of the Lord was kindled against his, this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. And the Lord rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in indignation and cast them into another land, as it is this day. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. And in Exodus fifteen twenty two is where he led me to finish. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, notice red, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And, when, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which then he has cast into the waters. The waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in the sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee, Jehovah Rapha. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. So the Lord is showing us to throw the tree in the waters because the tree of life is what cleanses the waters that are red with bitterness. Thanks for listening, guys. Be blessed.